Hello everyone, I'm MVL and in this video we're going to look at the best possible way to get picture from your Commodore 64. We're going to look at original hardware and other options as well. So without further ado, let's take a look. In terms of unmodified original hardware, on the back of the computer you have a few options. The first is RF, which is by far the worst quality. Combining the audio and video into one cable causes a lot of interference with the signal. The other option here is the AV port, which should be the same even if your system looks different like the C64C or if you have a 128. With this audio video port, you can use composite cables or SCART. This will be a huge improvement in video quality over RF, where the video and audio will at least be separated for less quality interference. You can get new C64 composite and SCART cables from Retro Computer Shack on eBay if you need them, as well as cables for the Atari ST, BBC Micro, ZX Spectrum and others. RetroGamingCables.co.uk also offers options, selling composite, S-video and regular SCART cables for the C64 as well. If you have a CRT TV like this Philips personal video monitor, you can plug straight in for fantastic quality. For a flat screen, I'd recommend a line doubler like a RetroTINK 2X to get improved visuals on a modern television. As you can see, there are a few options with original hardware, which is handy because a lot of televisions and devices have different inputs. For example, they don't use SCART cables in America, so in that instance, or if you're using a device which doesn't take SCART, something else might be right for you. Now before we move on to look at more options besides original hardware, let's have a look at some more options for your C64 computer. When it comes to controllers, I've always loved using the Cheetah 2 joystick or equivalent, but if you are looking for a console experience, you can use a Sega Mega Drive or Genesis controller on the C64, since they use the same port, and it's still a great option. Another great option comes from the advent of modern technology. Here in the UK, most of our games were on data sets, whereas overseas, many C64 games were on floppy disks, the big kind, that were actually floppy. The advantage of data sets was that they were so cheap, but just like videotapes and music cassettes, they broke very easily. Even back in the day, I'd find tape reels snapping when rewinding. And now, 30-something years later, with wear and degradation afflicting my collection, I'm very nervous of breaking my games. On top of that, due to rot over time, many of my games unfortunately don't work anymore. However, if you have something like the MP3 2C64, which you can find on places like eBay, you can actually load games from an MP3 player. While solutions like this are a little more complicated, I'm glad they exist so you can still play your games. This brings us to other modern options. The C64 Mini released a while ago, and like many people, I was very excited to give it a go. On the surface, it seemed like a fantastic option to play Commodore 64 games, especially with HDMI video output and the option to load your own games via USB. Since the Mini has been released, they have also released a full-size C64 with a working keyboard, which can also play VIC-20 games. And they also released a VIC-20 as well. These all have different inbuilt games on them, but they all work pretty much the same way. Though I will say the model with an inbuilt keyboard would make use a lot easier, as with the Mini, you need to use a USB hub to plug in a USB drive to load your own games, and have a USB keyboard and controller or joystick attached at the same time. When I originally got the C64 Mini, I may have had my expectations too high, and I suppose my suspicions should have been raised by the fact the system didn't own or use the name Commodore on it at all. The first issue was that the games ran at the wrong speed. One of my favourite things about Commodore games is the chiptunes music. Here when loading my own game, in this instance Invader Load, which is a loading game from budget tapes, from USB, the music speeds up and slows down inconsistently, which makes it sound unplayable. On top of that, the controller bundle with the Mini wasn't great, and I found many other USB controllers I tried just didn't work. The controller it came with wasn't micro-switched like an original joystick would be. Whilst understandably most gamers won't care about the clicky sounds micro-switch controllers make, the individual switches recognise directional movement incredibly well. Whereas with non-micro-switched controllers like what the C64 Mini came with, I find directional movement especially awkward. 
and the C64 Mini joystick was overall very stiff to use. Though it should be noted that the full-size C64 they now offer does come with a Micro Switch controller. It's been a while since I used the C64 Mini, so in all fairness I thought I'd add the most recent update file to the Mini and see if it's improved. And here's where the good news comes in. The update adds a number of new games, as well as the option to run at PAL 50 or NTSC 60Hz speeds. And although many USB controllers I tried still didn't work, I was able to get a Retrobit controller from a Super Retro K to work. You can't customize the buttons, but it's still a hell of a lot better. Some games I add via USB still run at the wrong speed, namely a favorite of mine, Invader Load, is still unplayable, but given all the improvements and some great games added to the Mini with the update, I have to say I'm feeling a lot better about it. The same company also released a compilation cartridge for the Evercade, which is an emulation console available in handheld and a TV-only version. And at the time of this video, there's another compilation cartridge coming for the Evercade, and maybe more down the line. What I will say here is that playing using the Evercade controller is much better than using the C64 Mini joystick. It feels like you're using a Sega Mega Drive controller, and I like that. The games on this compilation are mostly the same as on the C64 Mini, but the plus side here is the Evercade has plenty more cartridges to offer as well. And there you have it, I hope this helps you get a better picture from your Commodore 64 or informed you of a solution that is right for you. If you liked the video, be sure to leave a like or a comment to let me know what you think and don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content. And if you'd like to, you can also support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership. Thank you for watching, I've been MVL and I will catch you next time.